But why do you call them communists, V? I mean, it's simple, because that's what they are. They are various forms of anti-capitalists, which are sharing this meme online to the point that it went viral. And I can't even laugh at it, because it's difficult to laugh when you're bewildered. I mean, I, I'm bewildered that people think this way. Like, how, how can you possibly think that a medieval peasant was having a, a much better life than we have now? It is astonishing, isn't it? I mean, you have to be one of those Americans that believe that food sprouts from the supermarket, I guess. I will give them points, though, that they managed to do a meme that doesn't have walls of text. I mean, this is astonishing in it by itself, so credit is where credit is due. But you got to educate these people because this is a monumental case of human ignorance. And, and I suppose it is required um, if your entire belief system has to be deconstructing everything that our ancestors have built. I mean, first of all, it's, it's so easy to deconstruct. Like, even if you're an American and you've never seen people live off the land, because here in Europe, we, we do have like many European villages where people still have a very traditional lifestyle, especially in the mountains. Uh, they, they maintain a lot of traditions and they don't rely so much on modernity. But even in America, like you have the Amish. And the Amish today are not like the ones you read in the books. Uh, many of them still use electricity. Uh, some of them even have adopted computers at the workplace. Uh, but the Amish today do not work uh, uh, l l less than 260 days per year, right? And, and they still have access to modernity. They still have access to all the technology that we have now. And even with that in mind, they, they have like very difficult lives. So you can only imagine the type of life that a medieval peasant had. And and by the way, I know that uh, most communists, they, they hate objectivity. Like, they don't like it because it sets standards and stuff. Like I, I know, but archaeology exists. We can see the bones of the peasants that lived in the Middle Ages. We, we can see the hardships that they must have endured. I uh, lived in a village when I grew up with my grandmother. Uh, despite the fact that she was unemployed and she was living on a pension, uh, she definitely worked more than 150 days per year. And the reasoning for this is that to try and understand the life of medieval peasant, it is impossible to do so with the mentality that we have now. Because the mentality that people have now is that you have your house and then you go to the workplace and you spend eight hours there and then you come back home. And you relax, okay? Like, this is a luxury that medieval peasants didn't benefit from. There was no such thing as work and home. Everything was work. And it wasn't eight hours a day. It was 12 hours a day. Sometimes including Saturday. Well, actually, almost all the times including Saturday. But depending on the religion, uh, even Sunday was something where, where people worked. And by work, you have to understand, right? Because I think, like... The way they're interpreting is when the peasant goes out of his house and goes to toil the field, that is work, right? But when he comes back home, that is not work. But that, that That's not, no, like that's not how a medieval society functions. Like, yes, the peasant would wake up in, I, I mean, it wouldn't even be in the morning. It's usually when the rooster calls, like, like, like 4 a.m., 5 a.m. Like that's when rural people usually wake up. Then they start doing some house chores, which can include, like, uh, uh, opening the chicken coop, uh, feeding the pigs, uh, cleaning the stable and the barn, right? So, so those are work. And, and then you go to the field, and they spend the entire day onto the field where they toil, assuming it's summer, right? And then they come home and do more work. I mean, the, the idea, I mean, how, how spoil... Must you be, right? Just because you can wash the clothes now, but by taking all of the clothes and pushing them beside the washing machine and flipping a button, right? And then you come back later and sometimes the washing machine even dries them, right? Like you manage to do the job of a medieval peasant woman or a medieval child, because most of the time children were doing the house chores as well. But you manage to do what would take them three, sometimes four hours a day. You manage to do it just by pushing a button. 
right? Like, like your your way of life is so superior. It's so much better. Like even even kings that used to live in medieval time in castles don't have it as good as you do if you're a middle class American. But just just think about it. Like washing the clothes. Like what does it mean? Well, first they they would have to fabricate their own soap, which they would usually make it from. I think it was like pig lard or something. Like I, I don't know how how soap used to be made, but it was definitely um, an entire job just to make your own soap. Like, you, you didn't buy your soap. No, like, you, you'd have made your own. So you're making your soap, and then you have to take the clothes, you, you have to take them by the river, you have to wash them by hand. This is an exhausting process, especially if you have a large family of six or seven that is having to wash all the clothes by hand. Jesus Christ. Uh, and then... You have to come back home. You, you have to set them up to dry. I mean, all of this would take at least three hours. And this would not be considered the work, right? Because you're not on the field toiling. Like, this is separate. This is something that you just do it and you just manage to clean the, the clothes for that day. And then you have to take care of the animals. You got you to gotta, uh, feed the chickens. You got to do all these other things. And, and everything is done by hand. You don't, you don't have a Roomba. You don't have a vacuum cleaner. How how can people think this way? It's just it's just so bizarre, isn't it? And I'm not even talking about like uh, the wars. Oh my God! Oh now now the Turks are coming, right? Oh we, we, you gotta burn the fields and poison the wells, and you gotta uproot yourself and join the military. Your entire life is now upside down. You know what they don't talk about though, and, and this would be an interesting conversation that the peasants usually paid up to 20% in taxes. It was like, a, I think it was like a 10% tax to the church and they would pay like another 10 or 15% to the noble. And that was it. Like that was the taxation. Nowadays, you got to pay income tax. You got to pay VAT tax or in America, you got to pay sales tax. They're talking about uh, increasing, like putting carbon taxes and gas taxes and all the other hidden taxes and shit. Right? Like, why don't they talk about that? To be fair, you know, you, you can make the argument that because peasants didn't own much and they just uh, lived off the land, a 20% tax was phenomenally high. Um, especially when they didn't have refrigerators and food would spoil, right? So, so they lose food that way. Now they lose food with the tax and maybe it's a bad year, like there's drought or whatever. Like, I get it, you know? You can make the argument that now, because we live in a time of plenty, 50% uh, of everything you make being taken by the government, and assuming that the government gives you something in return, maybe, you know, it's it's not as bad as the peasantry. But, but, like, definitely this would be an interesting argument to make when it comes about taxation, because take into account a lot of peasants used to revolt because of taxes. The Americans founded a nation because of taxes. And they were being taxed a lot less than we are today. Let me know what you guys think. And as usual, I will see you in the comment section. Take care.